places there. In Hebrews chapter number 6 and verse number 19, the Bible tells us this, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which entereth into that within the veil. Title our message this morning, Strong Anchors in Our Storm. Strong Anchors in Our Storm. It's not, you know, it's not unusual for storms to come in our land as far as uh, physical storms. We've got snowstorms, got rainstorms, got hurricanes, got typhoons, got all these things. There are storms in our land. And uh, those things come and it causes great tragedy. In a lot of cases, it causes great, great tragedy. When a tornado sweeps through a town and demolishes homes, there's great tragedy. Uh, when ships are out on the sea and the storm is, is uh, rough, and sometimes it causes great tragedy. But friend, there's another storm that you and I face. That matter of fact, everybody faces them, but we face them in a different way because we're believers, because we're Christians, because we've been saved by the grace of God. We're all going to face storms. Many of you have been through storms this week. Uh, I've been through storms this week. Many of you faced heartache this week and, and trouble and trials. But you know what, friend? There's one thing that I have to rely on, which the world don't have to rely on, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. I can trust Him in the time of the storm. Uh, Hebrews, as the writer here in Hebrews, he uh, says this verse, we're talking about hope. We have hope. In this anchor. We have hope in this world. We have hope in the time of storm. We have hope when the storm is raging around us. We have hope. We look at this world as a sea of storms for the believer. Some, some preacher said that you're either in a storm, you're coming out of a storm, or you're going into another storm. And that seems to be the case in most people's lives. Somewhere we're facing a storm, we need to say we just had one, or we're coming out of one, or we're going into one. But let me tell you something, friend. I wouldn't trade Christian life for anything in spite of the storm. Thank God I'm glad to be a Christian today, aren't you? Glad that I'm saved in the marvelous grace of God. The church of believers are in this storm. Day in and day out, we're faced with different heartaches and battles and sorrows. Our, our port in this storm on this life sea, as we sail on life sea, the port that we're headed to, the home that we're headed to is heaven. Amen. And that's what makes it worth it all. Amen. That's what makes it comforter to our heart when we know that this life, even though a battle, even though a struggle, through this life we know that our, that our hope is in the Lord Jesus, our hope is in going home one day to be at the Lord. So we have hope in this storm. We are headed toward heaven. Jesus is our pilot. And that line of that anchor, we have an anchor, the Bible says. We have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. The anchor is Jesus. He's our pilot. He's our anchor. And you know where Jesus is at today? He's in the, at the right hand of the Father in the holy place within the veil. And my anchor does not run down. My anchor rope runs upward. Amen. And you think about that. Most ships are anchored to the bottom. Amen. My, my, my uh, vessel that I sail on, my eternity, my, my anchor that, that uh, anchors me is cabled in heaven. Amen. Within the veil. Christ was crucified. The veil was rent from top to bottom, showing that we have access into the holy of holies, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of the Father. Friend, I'm certainly grateful today that the, that the anchor of my soul is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is my hope. He is my anchor. But this world that we live in, sometimes we get burdened down, and sometimes we get sorrowful. And I'm, I'm reading all the time and hearing all the time of different people that have, uh, you know, even a lot of preachers that have committed suicide and have taken their own lives because they don't know many times how to handle the storm. But friend, I'll tell you how to handle the storm. Amen. You keep on with Jesus. 
You stay with the Lord. Don't abandon ship, my friend. Stay with the Lord. In Acts chapter number 17, we have a story here of Paul as he, was, as he faced a storm. In Acts chapter 27, verse number 14, now listen to the story. But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurocladon, which when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. Now this Eurocladon was a, a, uh, a, like a hurricane. It was like a typhoon. It was a, a, a terrible storm on the Mediterranean Sea. I, when we were in... In Israel, it was a beautiful sunny day and uh, wasn't clouds, but there arose a storm upon the Sea of Galilee and we had to take port. We had to stop and, and do the rest of our tour by bus because the storm on that sea was so, uh, you know, so bad and it wasn't even storming. It was just the, the wind storm that came up, whatever caused it, and I thank God let it happen to me so I'd have illustration, amen, for a stormy sea. But we, you know, we had to hold on and, and uh, keep our balance and try to stay on board till we got into port. And then we got into port and we made it safely there. But friend, that storm that Paul was in was, was something uh, unimaginable. They didn't see the sea, the, the, the uh, sky. They couldn't see the sun nor the stars for many days. So they were in a terrible storm. And the ship was caught up in it. In verse 16, and running under a certain island, which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship, and fearing lest they should fall into quicksands, straight sail, and so were driven. And we been exceedingly tossed with a tempest. The next day they lightened the ship, so they began to throw things overboard to make the ship lighter. And the third day we cast with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. They had given up hope of ever living again. They were given up hope of ever making it safely to shore. They were in a storm above all imagination. And Paul was in, the best thing on that ship was Paul and, and being saved by the grace of God. Because as far as I know, Paul was the only one on here that knew the Lord. Paul was the only one that, that, that professed faith in Christ and really could get a hold of God. And after, lose, after long absence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened to me and not have loosed from Crete, from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. Now Paul is tossed and, to tossed and torn upon the sea. And here they are all afraid they're going to die. And here's Paul standing up in the midst of them because why? He got in touch with God. God got in touch with him. And he's telling Paul, Paul, it's going to be all right. There's not any man's life going to be lost. Friends, sometimes we may, we may find out that, we, that it all is lost, that all hope is gone, that there's never going to be a bright day ahead of us again. But I'm telling you, if you're a child of God and you're on life's angry sea and you're being tossed to and fro, listen, friend, your anchor holds within the veil. Amen? Your anchor holds within the veil, and that is Christ Jesus, and He is never going to let you go. And so as, as it went on, Paul said, there's not going to be any harm or, or, or loss but of the ship. You're going to lose the ship, but no man's going to be lost. Saying, fear not... For, verse 23, For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Paul had a test, had a uh, opportunity within this storm to give testimony of God. Friend, you know that when the Lord leads you through a storm, that many times He gives you opportunity to make witness of Him. To bear witness of Him, God gives us the opportunity. And so Paul had that opportunity to say that he had been before God and he had been before him, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given all, thee all them that sail with thee. God told Paul, said, Paul, you've got to be brought before Caesar. And the only way you're going to get there is if I lead you safely to the shore. 
Wherefore, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Do you believe God today? Everybody bow your head just a minute. Answer me this question today. How many of you here are facing a storm or are in a storm right now? Right now, how many of you are facing a storm or are in a storm? Raise your hand. All over the building. Amen. Do you ever feel, you look up, do you ever feel like that all hope is gone? I've been in battles in my life. I've been in storms in my life. When everywhere I looked, it seemed like things were wrong. Everything I did seemed to go haywire. Nothing but bad news seemed to be coming my way. There was, didn't seem to be any light at the end of the tunnel. And in those times of darkness, in those times of testing and trial in my life, I learned that God is going to do one thing. He's going to see me through. Amen. And then when storms come along now, I know that God is going to see me through. Sometimes the storm have come physically. Sometimes they've come financially. Sometimes they've came emotionally. Sometimes it's been it's circumstances that are beyond my control. But when storms have come my way, I know that God is with me. I know He said He'll never leave me nor forsake thee. I know my anchor holds within the veil. So as, they, as this storm was going on, Paul told them, he said, uh, Howbeit we must be cast upon a certain island. Paul knew that they were going to land safely. But when the fourteenth night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight the shipmen demanded that they draw near to some country, deemed that they drew near to some country, and sounded and found it with twenty fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it fifteen fathoms. Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. They anchored that ship the best they could. In the shallow water that they were in, they, they held on as best they could. But the storm still rages. The storm still rages. Now, friend, I hear people say, I ask them, I say, how you doing? Oh, I'm holding on. I'm getting by. I'll tell you something, friend. I am holding on, but more important than that, God's holding on to me. And I'm in His hand. I'm in His, I'm in His, His uh, complete control, His complete care. And if I'll follow Him, if I'll let Him direct my life, when the storm is raging, when the storm is on, when it's dark all around me, I know that I can still hear the voice of the Master. I can still feel the tug of the anchor from Hallelujah from within the veil. The anchor holds. And so, friend, today they threw, they threw three, four anchors into the, into the shallow water and they wishing for the day. What day were they wishing for? The next day they were wishing for the day when all would be well. Let me tell you something, friend. There's a brighter day coming. Amen. There's a brighter day coming when you'll, when you'll suffer no more. You'll suffer no physical pain. You'll suffer no emotional pain. You'll suffer no depression. You'll suffer no loss of loved ones. You'll suffer no physical illnesses of any kind. There's coming a day. That's the day that I'm wishing for. Amen. That's the day my hope is in. It's when the Lord Jesus gets us out of this life. But until He comes, we'll face the storm. We'll be in the storm. But we'll know that our anchor holds, hallelujah, within the veil. Amen. My anchor holds. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship when they had let down the boat into the sea under color as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, Listen now, except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. You've got to be in the ship. You've got to be in the boat. You've got to be in that great boat of salvation if you're going to survive this life down here. Amen. If you're going to get to God, if you're going to get to heaven one day, you're going to have to be in the boat. And once you're in the boat, let me tell you something, friend. Once you've been saved by the grace of God, you're in the boat, and you can't cast yourself overboard. Amen. You're safe in the boat. 
And Paul said, if they don't stay in the boat, they're not going to survive. Their only hope is to stay with the boat. Their only hope is, to, is that they will stay in this ship and, and let God take care of everything. Your only hope, my friend, a child of God, and you may feel like sometimes, you, you may feel like giving up sometimes. You may feel like all hope is gone. I'm throwing up my hands. I'm going to quit. I know people that have done that, saved by the grace of God, but th things come that they could not handle. They would not rely upon God. They would not let God's people help them. And I've watched them throw up their hands and say, it ain't worth any of it. I'm going to the house. And they're the most bitter, miserable people that I know is those that are saved that have given up on God and given up on God's people and they've gotten by themselves and they seem like they're all alone and you talk to them about church, I ain't going back down there. And they've gotten bitter on God and friend, their life is miserable. Will they get to heaven saved by the grace of God? Yes, they will. But they'll get there, friend, and have no reward and they'll regret. Amen. I believe they'll regret they did not give more service to God. Stay in the boat, friend. No matter what comes your way, stay in the boat. Stay with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Stay with what works. Amen. And we got a church here. Amen. We got a church here. We don't just have here at Gabriel's Creek. We don't just have a gathering of people. We've got a church. And we see it every time something comes up and we get together. We see how God's people come together. No matter what's going on, seems like God's people come together and take care of things that need taken care of. And when, we, we, when, when one of us weeps, the other weeps with them. When one of us is in sorrow, others are in sorrow with them. When someone asks for prayer, we pray because we're a church. Amen. But you know what the devil says sometimes? Uh, you don't need to go back up there to that church. There ain't nothing up there for you. I want to tell you what's here at the house of God for you. There's a house full of love. There's a house full of care. And there's a house full of hope. Amen. Just stay with God. Stay with the church. Because you anchor holes within the veil. Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore I pray you to take some meat, for this is uh, for your health, for there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you. And when, they, when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then, they all, then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. And we were in all in the ship, two hundred, three score, and sixteen souls. Two hundred and seventy-six were on board that ship. And God told Paul and gave him uh, you know, gave him comfort not, and knowing that not one of them would be lost if they stayed in the ship. Not one. Not one would be lost if they stayed in the ship. Oh, friend, I'm glad I'm in the ship, aren't you? Amen, I'm glad I'm in the ship. And when they had eaten enough, they lighted the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into the which they were minded if it were possible to thrust in the ship. And when they had taken up the anchors, now this right here means, as, as, as I have studied this, and, and most people agree that taking up those anchors was a difficulty that caused them just to cut the rope and cut them loose because they committed to the sea. They left those anchors in the sea and let the storm have its way. And let God have His way. My friend, sometimes we as believers, we're out on the sea and, and we have cast an anchor and we're holding on to something that isn't able to hold on to us. We're holding on to something that doesn't give us any satisfaction. We're holding on to something that we, can't, that we think we can't live without. You know what the best thing to do is? Surrender all to God. There's a song that says, I surrender all, I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. And to you and I today, friend, we should cut, cut the anchor ropes that anchor us to this world and say, Lord, I'm with you. And friend, what has this world got for you? 
What, really, what has this world got for you? Oh, I, you know, I, I, I like this world as far as while I'm living. You know, I like being here. There's things I like to do in this world. But as far as my joy and my peace and my salvation, what has this world got for me? It don't offer me peace. I can't look around and say, man, the world is all good. Because there's wars and rumors of wars. <clears throat> there's politicians fighting. There's rulers fighting. It all seems like all that's a mess. But my listen, my hope is not in the politician. My hope is not in the condition of this world. My hope is in Christ. And I can go in this life, and I can live in this life. And even though the problems it has, I can enjoy this life. I can enjoy my presence in this world because of Jesus and only because of Him. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground and the forepart stuck, stuck fast and the remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken up with the violence of the waves. And the soldiers counseled to kill the prisoners lest any of them should swim out and escape. Now, what they were going to do, kill the prisoners, because if the prisoners escape, their own life would be at risk. But the centurion willing to save Paul kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which uh, could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And the rest, some on board, some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. One day, friend, we're going to escape safe to land. One of these days, the storm will be over. One of these days, the heartaches will be over. One of these days, the sorrows will be over. And guess what? We're going to land safe at home. We're going to land safe on the other side. And there we'll see a land where there'll be no more sorrow. We'll see a land where there'll be no more emotional pain. We'll, be, we'll see a land where there'll be no more physical illness. You know what, what the devil tries at you all the time? While you're sick, he starts on your mind. Well, if you was living right, you wouldn't be sick. If you was really a Christian, you wouldn't be sick. You wouldn't be ailing. I'll tell you something. God, God knows what you're going through. And when the devil comes along and, and tries to fill you full of his lies, you just remember your anchor holds within the veil. Your, your anchor is, is safe with the Lord Jesus Christ. Once in a while, God will pull the line a little bit and let you know, boy, I like that, don't you? Sometimes when things are going wrong, you'll get along with God and you'll get down to pray and God will say everything's going to be all right. He's tugging on the line, letting you know everything's okay. I'm glad that my anchor holds. I'm glad that I'm safe within the veil. And I'm glad no matter what the storms of life will bring, my anchor holds. Now that's my introduction. And I'm going to stop. I'm not even going to get to the four anchors that I meant to preach to you on. It's pretty good, but I like that enough. Amen. God says that's enough, and I'm going to quit right there. And I want to leave you with this thought. Your anchor holding. God's never lost one. He's never give up one. All that it will ever come to him, he says, will be his. He says, I will in no wise cast them out that come to the Lord. Have you come to Jesus? Do you know Him? This time of the year, seems like everybody turns their attention toward uh, gift giving, which is fine. Spending money, which that's up to you. Black Friday, which everybody killed and beat and maimed people almost. Yeah, to get, to get $10 off of something that they run the price up on last week, $10.00 so they can make you think you was getting $10 price deduction or 50 or whatever it was. Listen, I'll tell you something, friend. This is not. My anchor is in the Lord Jesus Christ, and this is the reason. This, this, this reason for this season is Jesus. And don't through all the hustle and bustle of this season, <coughs> please remember that your anchor is in the Lord Jesus Christ. My anchor holds. Are you anchored in him? Everybody bow your head just for a moment. I'm through. I did not get to the message, but I got to what God wanted me to. I'm certain of. While every head's bowed, no one looking around. I want to ask you, is there one this morning in the building? Now, when I ask you this, I'm not going to come to you and embarrass you. I just want, if 
I just want you to, if you're not saved, I just want you to acknowledge that so well we can pray for you. <coughs> I wonder this morning if there's one, raise your hand, say, Preacher, I don't know the Lord. I'm not saved. My anchor is not in heaven. I don't know Jesus as my Savior. I want to pray for one, raise your hand, and say, Preacher, pray for me. Is there one? If you're lost, the best thing you can ever do is own up to that and realize that you're lost. How do I know if I'm lost, preacher? If you've never made, if you've never got on your face before God, if you've never openly with the Lord said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, I know I'm a sinner, and I, I, I repent of my sins. Lord, will you save me? Will you come into my heart? If you've never done that, friend, I'm sorry, but you don't know the Lord. And I wonder again, one more minute. Someone here, raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. I've never been saved. I don't want to pray for the child of God here this morning and say, Preacher, I'm facing bad storms. I'm facing terrible times. And I've even thought about giving up. But I don't want to give up because my anchor holds. I want to say, Someone raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. Don't, don't, don't let it bother you that somebody's watching. God's watching. Amen. Or for someone. Raise your hand and say, Preacher, I'm in a storm. And this battle is real. God bless you. Is there someone else? Raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. This storm is real. This storm has been long. But I know God's going to help me in this storm. Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning for all your grace and your goodness. Lord, we've tried to preach what you've laid on our heart. God, best we could, Lord, convey a message of the anchor in the storm. And God, even though the storms may get heavy and even though may, they may get long and even though they may get loud and boisterous, God, I know that you're our anchor in our storm. Lord, we pray for these that have gathered today. God, I know many people this morning are facing battles and heartaches and sorrows and I pray, God, that you'd help them. God, may your grace be with them. And Lord, those that are facing Troubles that seem nobody can help them with. I pray, God, you reassure their hearts that you're there to help in the time of storm. We bless you. We thank you. Lord, for what you've done here today, we say to God be the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm through. That'll be one of the only times you'll ever know that I just, amen, gave up before I got to the message. But the Lord said that's through. Amen. All right. Anyone else got anything?